Hey there! As you might remember, in the last video of this series we talked about voltage regulators. It is now time to complete the talk about DC regulators introducing the current regulator. Before getting into this subject, however, please spend a moment to click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon that follows. Besides supporting my channel, you will be automatically informed of all the new videos coming out of this channel. Let's begin. In the previous video of this series, we have seen how voltage regulators keep a constant output voltage regardless of how much current the load attempts to use. Current regulators work in the opposite way. When the load changes, they keep changing the voltage offered to the load, so that the current used remains constant. There are two main types of current regulators. Passive current regulators and active current regulators. Active current regulators can also be classified as constant current diodes, simple transistor current sources, Zener diode current sources, LED current sources, transistors with diode compensation current source, current source with thermal compensation, op-amp current source, and voltage regulator current sources. This classification is by no means complete, but it should be enough to understand the basic principles of current generators design. Let's now examine these current generators types one by one. Passive current source generators are based on the principle of the voltage divider made up with two resistors, one of which, RL, is the actual load, while the other, RS, is a resistor put in series with a voltage generator. For low values of RL and high values of both RS and V with respect to the load, the current remains relatively constant when the load resistance changes. For example, if you have a 9V voltage generator and a resistor RS of 10K, a load that changes between 10 and 100 ohms will have a current of 0.89 mA, which changes in the third decimal digit only. This kind of current generator is very easy and cheap to make. However, it wastes a lot of power on resistor RS, so it is convenient to use only for very small currents, in order to limit the power dissipation. Also, higher currents require much higher voltages, since most of the voltage goes to RS rather than the load. The constant current diode regulator is normally not used in discrete circuits. Instead, it is largely used inside integrated circuits. It works based on the saturation current of a JFET. Basically, if we connect the source and gate together, when the voltage between drain and source goes below a certain value, the JFET enters in its saturation zone, and therefore the current becomes a fixed value. A resistor added in between source and gate can be used to tune the value of the current to the desired one. This configuration is called a constant current diode because the JFET connected this way acts like a diode, allowing current to flow in only one direction. The simple transistor current source is a generator similar in concept to the passive current source, but, this time, the resistor RS is made of a BJT or a FET transistor that acts as a nonlinear resistor. The base of the transistor is polarized by resistors R1 and R2. The voltage present on the base, reduced or the VBE of the transistor, is applied on the fixed resistor R3, thus generating a constant current on the emitter and therefore on the collector, where the load RL is applied. This simple circuit works very well as long as the currents are low enough to not cause big changes in the temperature of the transistor or the resistors R1, R2 and R3. Changes in temperature of these components would cause a drift in the value of the current in the load. The effect of the temperature on resistors R1 and R2 can be mitigated by replacing R2 with a Zener diode. This also helps in making the output current independent from the amount of current IB needed to drive the base of the transistor. The output current is calculated as the ratio between the Zener voltage diminished by BBE and the value of resistor R3. 
Although this circuit is a definite improvement from the single transistor circuit, we can still see some current drift due to the temperature changes of R3 and especially the transistor itself. Another improvement is done by the usage of an LED in place of the Zener diode. The circuit will work similarly to the previous case, but when the temperature changes, the transistor and the LED will drift in such a way that the LED will compensate for the transistor changes, thus providing a more stable current with the temperature. A similar approach is given by the use of a regular diode in series with a Zener diode. Again, the variations in the characteristics of the diode with the temperature will compensate the variations of the BBE in the transistor. Although the usage of an LED or a diode helps compensating the current drift with temperature, the compensation is not perfect because the variation of the temperature of the diode and the transistor are similar but not identical. The best solution for thermal compensation is in fact to use a second transistor, connected in such a way to mimic the diode and the Zener, by providing a characteristics change with the temperature identical to the one of the transistor that generates the constant current. The circuit has also the added value of being much faster in adjusting to load changes, because of the high amplification in the negative feedback loop introduced by the second transistor. Another good example of a fast reaction with a negative feedback loop is the usage of an op-amp to drive the transistor providing the current to the load. In this circuit, the load RL and the sensing resistor RS are directly connected in series to the emitter of the transistor. The op-amp senses changes in the voltage across RS compared to the Zener voltage on its positive input and immediately corrects the voltage on RS to keep it constant. Therefore, the current across RS is constant and so is the current through the load RL. The last constant current regulator I would like to show is one that can be made using a voltage regulator. For example, using a LM317 voltage regulator connected as a pass-through current in series with a resistor works effectively as a current regulator. Specifically for this IC, according to its datasheet, the output current expressed in amps is equal to the number 1.25 divided by the value of the resistor. For example, for a resistor of 5 ohms, the output current will be 250 mA. As you can see, the variety of current regulators is vast, probably even greater than the voltage regulators. All of that provides the designer of current regulators with several options, based on the particular necessity of the project that needs to be powered. What do you think about current generators in general? Do you have any project where you need to use one? And uh, did this video help you in providing you alternatives? Did you learn something new? Please let me know in the comments, it will help a lot to improve and better aim future videos on this channel. Also, please give the video a thumb up if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, so you will be informed when a new video comes out. Small donations will also help keep these videos going. Info to make donations are posted at the end of the video and in the description below. See you soon, and in the meantime, happy experiments!